about um, Tony saying that Frankie stole all his thunder. Well, Frankie, Tony, Piero, uh, the last video that you just seen, everything steals my thunder. Maybe I should have done the story bit first so then everything would be in context. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about is um, getting your story straight. And the interesting thing about story is it's in all of us. And it's in all of us better than anyone else in the world because we're Irish. We can tell story, we do story much better than anybody else. The Newcastle example is a great way of using free media. If you get your story right, you can actually have a very powerful tool, and that's what I want to get into and talk to you about. But to put it in context and go back to uh, what Frank was saying, um, but go back to what Tony was saying um, about you know, our, our own story and adversity and rising from that. Just to sort of give you the reason why I found this particular way of being, having a powerful uh, business tool was my own life. Um, in terms of adversity, it started reasonably early in my life. My mum died when I was 12 years old, which sort of somersault everything I wanted to do. And at the age of 20, I had an accident, similar to Tony's. There was my arm, it goes right up to my elbow, uh, saved my face as I went through a windscreen. Um, but I was the lucky one. In a car crash where I was driving and somebody else died, it took a while to bounce back. But bounce back, I did. Not by design, but not rather by accident. And um, I've had great things then happen, uh, including I met my wife uh, actually in a hospital. Um, she's a nurse. We now have four fantastic children. So great things can happen from adversity. Um, but the real thing in terms of business was another point of adversity. When I set up Shinna Whale, I set it up to do a documentary on a Dublin band. Everybody knew the story of U2. Nobody knew the story of Aslan. But I had done sound for Aslan, I knew the story and I wanted to be able to tell it. So we did a video, uh, it was a sort of a live concert video and each member of the band telling their story. That concert video soundtrack became their biggest selling album and it kicked us off as a company, gave us critical claim, we got out of work and we bounced along nicely until I met a company called Ebion who at the time of dot-coms were an interesting company in that they were spending money faster than they were getting it. Their 51% shareholder, Aircom, pulled out. The day after, we delivered seven videos. So we lost a shitload of money. And at the time, my partner who had set up the company decided they didn't get into this to lose a load of money and went off to uh, forge his career as a director. Happy to say he's one of the top directors in television in the UK at the moment. Um, but I had to plow on. And I remember being at home and uh, my wife, Catherine, saying to her that, what am I doing going to this conference in Las Vegas? <coughs> we've no business, we've no orders, we've nothing to do. Um, and it was actually Catherine who said, but you're nothing else. Uh, you know, you've got the hotel paid for, you've got the flight paid for, uh, you might as well go over, chill, you never, you give you a perspective and you come back. Little did I know that she was the best business mentor I could ever have. Went over to that conference, it was uh, NAPE in Las Vegas. I hadn't even got a meeting booked. But along the, these conferences, um, they have uh, you know, sales conference on the floor and lots of stands and all the different exhibitors and you can buy and sell their programs and so on and so forth. But they actually had a conference uh, in, in tandem with it. And the funny thing is, I've never had the time at any other conference I've gone to now and I go to Cannes a couple of times a year to actually go to these conferences because I've got so many meetings. But at this one I went in. There was a room not too dissimilar to this and on the panel they had the, uh, the uh, pr original producer from Australia, the distributor, the agent, the network, and there's um, uh, a few other people, I think one of the main stars of a TV show called Pop Stars. I didn't even know what a format was. It was like a master class in introducing me to this show. I'd spent years working in the music business as a sound engineer. I was sitting there thinking, this is a show created for me. I get Louis Walsh to do it. I get Simon Cowell to put money in from the record label. I did all his tours in the UK. So sitting there in a the room thinking, this is the way I'm going to make this television business work. Um, and I went up, doorstep Des Monaghan, who's a guy who owns Screen Time in Australia. I asked him, uh, you know, name like Monaghan, there must be a bit of Irish there. He said, my mother's from Cork, my father is from Dublin, um, and uh, let's go and have a coffee. And from that, I made uh, a deal to get the rights over to do a show over here. I tell you that story to let you connect a little bit to me. 
And the reason why I think story is so hugely important is, as human beings, we're conditioned, unlike animals, to understand things in a narrative structure. Aristotle put it down as beginning, middle, and end. If you go on into learning about narrative in film school, you'll find out there's five act structure, there's seven act structure, you have the rising tension in the film and the falling tension and the resolve and so on. We are conditioned to understand simple stories. So if you use that in your business, it can be a hugely powerful tool. So start by having a conversation with yourself. Where did it all start? Where did you come from? You know, what does your product do? How does it uh, help things? So you're coming in and you're going to be the hero to the villain in somebody else's business. This is the thing I learned when we were selling The Apprentice, where we are going into businesses and I was trying to get people to spend 140000 sponsoring one TV program. It wasn't very easy. You could buy a lot of commercials for 140 grand. Um, so we had to convince people that this particular program would do a job better than anything else. So what we started doing was having conversations. We started to listen to people. What are their business objectives? What are they trying to do? Who are they trying to talk to? Then we go away and we come back in and say, after listening to you, we have a couple of ideas. We think we could do this type of uh, uh, show which will address this, this, and this. And it will offer up the opportunity to do X, Y, and Z. And it worked. So when you've got your story, write it down. Gavin Duffy keeps on telling me I should write a book. Um, I have no intention of writing a book. You never know. We, there's a, apparently there's a book in everyone. So getting your story right, you might start writing a book by actually writing it down. Then tell it to somebody. Tell it to your family, to your friends. Uh, maybe tell it to the mirror if you don't want to talk to anyone. But practice it. So the result is you're never left without the ability to tell a well thought out story. Look for opportunities to tell your story. Go to people like Frankie, ask me on a panel, go to a magazine, go to a local newspaper. If you're a woman, definitely do it, because every media outlet in the country are looking for female speakers. It's free publicity. You can get it everywhere. Local press, local magazines, and then get it on your website. But better still, get you telling your story on your website. It's much more impactful. Then you become an expert storyteller. Because you then know your business inside out and backwards. You've told it so many times. People really start to believe you. They then start looking for you because you're an expert in your business. Um, so being that expert storyteller adds another layer to your ability to actually sell your business for free. I think it was Sevi Ballesteros said, you know, practice, practice, practice. The more I practice, the luckier I get. And it's very true. Get your story straight and get it out there and um, opportunities will just follow. So use it everywhere. I learned PR from Mr. Louis Walsh. And his idea was um, when he was launching a pop band, he wanted them everywhere. Like pollution, he said. He didn't care. He'd make up the story, he'd just put it out there. So internal messaging is also hugely important. If you have your story well versed, uh, you can actually use it as a powerful tool in your business. It helps with your brand, building your brand. It helps with the culture within the company. People are in line. It lets you look at what your mission is and step you through it, telling the story of how you got there, what your vision is. Everything about your story should be built into this. And if you get your story right, your values are the key points of tension in it. It should be across everything you do. Really good way of staff induction. Pierre will talk about hiring the wrong person. One of the things I learned is hire slowly, fire fast. So sometimes you've got to get them in and get them onto the track very, very quickly. If you've got a story to be able to bring them up to speed, it helps. So how do you use a business tool beyond that? This insight from your business, or you and everything you're doing, gives everything you're trying to do authenticity. It helps you explain better what you're, what, uh, you're going to do with the, the business. It lets your customer touch and feel your brand. Um, and everybody has a brand. If you talk to David McKernan, who owns Java uh, Coffee, anybody know David? He spent a fortune on brand. I actually think it's in the millions. He spent more on brand than building his business. That's how important brand is. But your story is your brand. And you can change your story, and you can change your brand. 
Top companies use story everywhere. In banking, they're using story in an even bigger way right around the world. We're doing a new show that's the number one show in Australia, if we can actually get it funded here in Ireland. And one of the biggest sponsors is ANZ Bank. And the way they use the show is to take ordinary people doing extraordinary things in their house, their home, uh, with their life, and they use those stories then into everyday commercials and everything else. Because it makes their brand connect to real people. In times of crisis, if you've got your story straight, it helps you get your back on track. Then you don't have to ring Gavin to come in and help you. Because Gavin just come in and put you back on track by getting you to revert to type. Get back on, on, on team. So, get your story straight, and now be very careful. Because you've got two ears and one mouth. And it's where it gets really interesting if you get your story straight. It gets really powerful. Ask for a story back. Because then you're in a conversation. How can I help? Get people to start sharing what they want. Share real insight. Don't be afraid to be honest. Be amazed at the people who actually don't call it as they see it. But people respect you more when you do. But don't overdo it. Know it to end the story. Close the book, take the order, next step. One of the things I found was, especially back out in your apprentice again, selling sponsorships, I'd oversell it. Just need to shut up, get the order and get out. So you have many stories, um, and a base story can have many chapters. You may have to adapt it. You're going to go into a different client, different part of the business. So have the ability to maybe uh, have a slightly uh, tangent on your story that will take you into that business and world. But it must be consistent. It can't go off track completely. So finally, story style. Whether you're in business, you're in sales, uh, you build personal relationships. Relationships make better sales, and stories help you connect to people, because people buy from people. Thank you.